This video will discuss the standard entropy correction, which is the correction in the entropy when we correct for the fact that the standard state is an ideal gas, but uh, most gases are non-ideal. So we're going to start off by just defining some terms. We have S bar, which is the molar entropy, which is an intensive state function. That's the entropy of our system divided by the number of moles in that system, S bar. We have S uh, with the circle subscript up in the top right. That's the standard state molar entropy. And the standard state for gases is a hypothetical ideal gas at one bar of pressure. So the standard state molar entropy minus the molar entropy at one bar is equal to the correction for a non-ideal gas at that temperature. So what we want to get is the entropy change that happens as a result from going from some non-ideal gas at one bar in 298 Kelvin to some ideal gas in the standard state at 298 Kelvin. So what we're going to do to do this is we're going to take the following route. Since entropy is a state function, it doesn't matter what path we take to complete this transformation. It just matters that this is our initial state and this is our final state. So what we're going to do, we're going to calculate the entropy change that occurs as we take our real gas, which is non-ideal, from one bar down to approximately zero bar. We can't get it exactly to zero bar because some of our equations diverge, but we're going to get it close enough to zero bar that the gas is going to behave ideally. Remember that all gases behave ideally as the pressure approaches zero, so we're going to get it to some pressure which is low enough that the gas will behave ideally and non-ideal and ideal gases are the same. So when I say approximately zero there, it's sort of the, the limit as we approach zero but not exactly zero itself. Just low enough such that the gas is entirely ideal. All right, and then we're going to compress it back up to one bar at our standard state as if it were an ideal gas during the compression. All right, so delta S bar, the change in, molar in, change in molar entropy of step one here, is equal to the molar entropy of about zero bar of pressure minus the molar entropy of one bar of pressure for our ideal gas. So that's the integral from one to zero, because this is final minus initial. So we have final minus initial again. Note that the limits of integration are reversed relative to what we're used to. But the integral from A to B is the negative integral from B to A. So we have the integral from 1 to 0 of partial derivative of S bar with respect to pressure at constant temperature integrated with respect to pressure. So that's going to be equal to the negative of the integral with our limits of integration switched. So same integral, but switching out 1 and almost 0. All right, for step 2, going up from 0 to 1 as an ideal gas, it's going to be s s naught minus s bar at 0 bar. That equals the integral from 0 to 1 of ds dp of an ideal gas. So that's equal to that's equal to minus the integral from 0 to 1 of dv bar dt dp. Here we're using the Maxwell relation from the Gibbs energy that the partial derivative of molar entropy with respect to pressure at constant temperature is equal to negative partial derivative of molar volume with respect to temperature at a constant pressure. All right, for an ideal gas, we have that P times V bar ideal equals RT. PV equals NRT or PV bar equals RT. So the ideal molar volume of an ideal gas equals gas constant times temperature divided by pressure. So the partial derivative of the ideal molar volume of a gas with respect to temperature is ddt rt over p, which is the gas constant divided by the, pr the pressure. All right, so our entropy change when we go from one bar of a real gas to one bar of an ideal gas is the same entropy change as taking our, our real gas from 1 to 0 bar and then compressing it back up to 1 bar as an ideal gas, or delta S bar 1 plus delta S bar 2. 
So this is now going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of, we have a minus sign from here, and we're going to get another minus sign from our Maxwell relation. So for our non-ideal case, we end up getting dv bar dt of p minus dv bar ideal dt. All of that is going to be integrated with respect to pressure. All right, now we need to get what is going to be our partial derivative of molar volume with respect to temperature for our non-ideal gas. All right, so we're going to use the virial equation of state to get at this result here. So the compressibility factor Z is defined as PV bar over RT. For an ideal gas, that's 1. But for a non-ideal gas, we continue as a Taylor series of pressure now. So this could be expressed in terms of molar volume or in terms of pressure. Um, the virial coefficients for pressure are the same as those for molar volume, but there's a factor of RT that comes in, in there as well that converts between them. So we have 1 plus second virial coefficient divided by RT times P plus third virial coefficient, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, we're at a low enough pressure where we're only going to consider the second virial coefficient. All right, so our molar volume, which is going to be multiplying both sides by RT over P, is going to be RT over P plus the second virial coefficient plus some things that occur after that. All right, so we take the partial derivative of this molar volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure. It's going to give us R over P plus the derivative of our virial coefficient with respect to temperature. Notice that our virial coefficient is only a function of temperature, so this partial derivative becomes a normal derivative because it's only a function of that one variable. All right, so we can substitute in uh, that case into our, into our integral here. So we're going to get the entropy of our standard state minus the entropy of a real gas at one bar is equal to delta S bar 3 equal to the integral from approximately 0 bar up to 1 bar of. In our ideal case, we have minus R over P. For our non-ideal case, we have R over P plus D B2V of T over DT, integrated with respect to pressure. So our entropy change during this process is going to be, well, this cancels out, this cancels out. The only thing that's left inside the integral is the derivative of the virial coefficient with respect to temperature. But this virial coefficient doesn't depend on pressure, it only depends on temperature. So we can factor it out of this integral of pressure. So we get dB2V of T dt times the integral from approximately 0 to 1 of dp. So now we have that the uh, change in entropy going from our non-ideal to our ideal standard state is equal to the derivative of the second virial coefficient with respect to temperature times one bar of pressure. So if we're in a unit of pressure that's bar, then we just need to include this virial coefficient. If we're in pascals, then we multiply by whatever one bar is in pascals, so that's 100,000. If it's in atmospheres, we multiply by the conversion between atmospheres and bars, etc. The one bar is just there to remind you that you need to multiply times whatever one bar is in the unit of pressure that you're using. Okay, so for the van der Waals equation of state, for a van der Waals gas, you can show that the second virial coefficient is equal to B, the molecular size parameter, minus A, the molecular attraction parameter, over RT. So the derivative of this uh, coefficient with respect to temperature is equal to A over RT squared. This quantity, the attraction parameter A for O2, is equal to 1.382 liters squared bar per mole squared. So this uh, non-ideal uh, entropy correction for O2 at 298 Kelvin, if I plug in 298 Kelvin there in the value of A, ends up being 0 0.0187 joules per mole Kelvin, or approximately 0.01% of the standard entropy. So in the end, this ends up being a fairly small uh, correction to the entropy overall, 
but notice that our prediction for what the uh, standard entropy is using our statistical mechanics models from our partition functions was already pretty accurate. So this may actually be a significant part of the error of statistical mechanics relative to the experimental result for gases that are around one bar in 300 Kelvin. Because at, at one bar of pressure, we don't really get that much non-ideal behavior. Gases are almost ideal. So it ends up being a fairly tiny perturbation of that. And the magnitude of that kind of depends on, as we saw here, this derivative only depends on the molecular attraction parameter, which is what's affecting our entropy change as we go from a non-ideal to our ideal standard state.